Good evening. So usually I tell a story just by kind of chatting with a friend, but Shaw gave me a time limit and told me to stay on topic. <laughs> My career as a school teacher began in 2013 and ended in 2015. However, my life as an educator began around 1978 and continues to this day beyond a standard classroom. When I first contemplated becoming a classroom teacher, the issue of pay was not the first thing I considered. See, I was unemployed. So the prospect of a job with a regular paycheck was very exciting. My friend who worked at TFA encouraged me to apply even though I thought that I was not the age demographic they typically look for. She said that I would have a wealth of knowledge to bring to the classroom and to my fellow board members. So I applied, I was accepted, and I was selected by one of the charter schools here in Indy, which happened to be the only boys middle school in the city. No names. <laughs> I was charged with teaching my scholars to read on grade level. The principal told me that they had two doctors in that position before. They didn't work out, but he felt that'd be different. Now, during the whole process of interviewing for and being placed at a school, I had not discussed salary. We had been told by TFA we had to accept the first place that made an offer, no negotiation, no opting out for better placement. It just so happened that my first interview was with the school that picked me. Still, even after I knew that that, that was my employer for the next two years, compensation was never discussed. So I headed off to Oklahoma for training, not knowing how much I'd be making. Fortunately, I qualified for transition funds. Those are monies awarded to those who could show true financial need, and remember I was unemployed. So, of course, you had to pay it back afterwards. While some of my fellow core members were using their transition funds to finance great weekend adventures, no names again, <laughs> my monies went to pay my mortgage, my car note, utilities, etc. cetera, though so I did buy some cute teacher clothes. <laughs> And I did not know how much I would be making when I got back to Indy. About the third week into Oklahoma, I received an email with a contract from my school. Not only was the job different than what they had asked me to do initially, but the salary was $23,000 less than what I had been earning in my nonprofit position, where my years of experience and education were factored into my salary. So I started my teaching career really anxious. Anxious about all the policies and strategies and paperwork, et cetera, that goes along with teaching, as well as how much money I was not making. I had done my budget, and I was going to just make it each month, barring any emergencies. Of course, emergencies happened. A pothole ate the front of my car, new tires. My basement flooded, new sump pump. Ninjas had a fight with fighting stars in my stomach that included a hospital stay and the subsequent bills. And those were just the big things. The little things came regularly and most often were not related to my needs, but the needs of my students. Middle school boys need a lot of stuff to get them to read at grade level. There were granola bars, Takis, hot Cheetos, <laughs> lotion because they stay ashy but they don't like to be ashy, <laughs> socks, shoes, rewards for reaching reading goals, classroom decor, coats, soccer cleats, treats for I-STEP, NWA, and interims, deodorant, toothbrushes and toothpaste, Gatorade, athletic fees, Febreze. <laughs> And the greatest expense known to teacher comment, pencils. Yeah. <laughs> so many pencils that just disappear. Actually, I think I've figured this out. What really happens to those pencils? They get eaten. <laughs> Seriously, go into a classroom where they use pencils and watch the kids slowly devour them. <laughs> as I grew as a teacher, 
My income did not, and my students continued to have needs. I, like many other teachers, made the choice to give up some things so that our students could have what was necessary for an excellent educational experience. Now, you may think back over the list of necessities I listed. You may wonder if those are really necessary to educate children. Or you may say a lot of those things should be taken care of by parents. Well, where I taught, those were just the basics. And parents all can't, can't always make ends meet, even when trying very hard. But when you're a teacher, you don't even think about these things as sacrifices or loss. When you're a teacher, you think about what is going to get your kids fired up to learn. I, I had hit upon some pretty inexpensive measures, such as peanuts. Did you know that middle school boys will actually work and stay on task for one to two in the shell roasted peanuts? <laughs> <laughs> <Make that down. laughs> and kids need full stomachs. They need to be warm. They need not to be embarrassed by their ashy elbows and ankles. <laughs> and to know that there are several adults who care about them in and out of school. I know during my teaching years, I lived beyond my means to make sure my students knew I was one of those adults. Of course, it wasn't all monetary. There were positive calls home, hugs, long talks, scoldings, mild threats, <laughs> and lots of good times. I showed my students I cared by the materials and lessons presented. I spent many, too many hours lesson planning attempting to bring hard to grasp concepts to life, or to grade stacks of reading and writing journals, giving specific feedback as we had been taught to do. In fact, one night I was at the school so late, someone turned the alarm off, and as I move about my classroom, I hear this, who are you? And I turn to see two police officers, guns drawn, demanding that I present ID. And I'm just like, I'm just grading papers. <laughs> As time went on, I got better at teaching, and I loved my boys. I would have stayed in the classroom longer with them at that school, except when it was time to negotiate my contract, they offered me less than what a beginning teacher would make at an IPS public school. I couldn't do it anymore. I was good and grown with the mortgage. I had student loans to pay. I wasn't being offered a salary in line with my education, nor the same as my peers with the same level of experience. Though it was a hard decision, I issued an ultimatum. I asked for just $5,000 more than what they offered. My counter offer was denied. I started interviewing. I decided to finally actually work as a school psychologist. So I'd earned my degree way back, way back in the early 2000s. I'd never actually worked as one. I was excited as I saw the starting salaries for school sites in the local school districts. The offers were tempting, but I chose IPS, even though they do pay less than the surrounding districts. I was given credit for my years of experience teaching middle school and graduate school. I also was able to work with and for the students and families that I feel I can help the most. I had a lot of cognitive dissonance about leaving the classroom. What message would that send to my kids? Turns out, I left teaching, but I didn't leave my boys. Leaving teaching allowed me to give more time and more money to students. My original boys, as well as the new ones I met at IPS. I now have the financial and psychological resources to coach soccer, lead a Girl Scout troop, and have a girlfriend. <laughs> this is now my fourth year as a school psych in IPS. I pay my mortgage. I'm still paying my student loans. I work a normal school day. I occasionally bring work home in the evenings or on weekends. I have great colleagues, and each day we try to ensure that we are helping IPS's youngest students receive appropriate special education services when needed. And I love what I do. 
In fact, I'm a much better school psychologist than I was a teacher. I mean, I was a pretty good teacher. <laughs> but I am a great school psychologist. In part because I'm not as anxious. I have more mind space to focus on the students in my role as well as bringing more great school psychologists to IPS. And I still buy Cheetos and Takis and chips and Cokes and shoes and pay fees, and I keep lotion handy for random ashy kids. <laughs> and every year, at the start of the school year, I give my teacher friends a pack of pencils, just to say thanks, and to let them know they'll always have my financial and emotional support.